congratulations on buying MP bundle. I really hope you're enjoying it so far. In this video, I would like to help you with MP customization. The video is going to be separated into a few sections. First, I would like to show you how you can use the Visual Builder to customize the page. Then I'm going to show you how to use master CSS file and what is master CSS file at all. Then I'm going to show you how to use your browser's developer tools and what that is. And in the end, I'm going to cover some potential issues you might encounter while building your website. So without any further ado, let's get started. To start, let's enable the Visual Builder by clicking this button here. If you don't know what Visual Builder is, this is an amazing new DV team feature that allows you to customize and edit the page without actually leaving the page. You can make your updates directly onto the page and immediately see how it looks like. For example, if I would like to edit this text here, I can simply click and select it and then type some new text. Some new text. There we go. And if you hover over a section, row or a module, uh, you can see that a few options pop up and also you can increase or decrease spacing of the sections. If you hover over a module, uh, there are a few options. First one is to move the module around. You can simply click and drag the module. You can go to module settings and we are going to see uh, what these settings are in a moment. You can duplicate the module, you can save it to the library for the later use or you can simply delete it. This time we are going to focus on the module settings. So let's click that and let me show you what we have here. Here we have three tabs, content, design and advanced. In content tab obviously we can update the content. We can type in the title we can also update this text here, another text. You can link this module, you can add some URL, you can assign a background and you can add an admin label. This is the label that only administrators see. Second tab is the design tab and this is the one that you're going to use the most. Here, majority of the design of this module is set and as you can see, there are some text options, uh, button, sizing, spacing, uh, and many more options. I'm not going to go through all of these options as it would take too much time. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you how you can, for example, change the text. So I have toggled body text and you can see that it's really easy to change uh, the color, font size, uh, body letter spacing and more. Advanced tab is where you can assign the element a unique ID or a class or where you can add a custom CSS and usually you are going to find some custom CSS already written here. So if you are going to customize an element, first place where you want to look for the design is of course the design tab then switch to advanced tab and see whether there is some custom CSS here. And that's it for the module settings. Now let's see how master CSS file works. What I have here is the MP persons module called guardian person module. And I would like to show you how we can customize this module using the master CSS file. Go to settings MP and under get started tab scroll down and you're going to see open master css button this is going to open all the css in a new window select and copy everything and paste it in your text editor you can use any text editing software i use notepad plus plus it's a free and a really great one when you open this document the first thing you're going to notice is that it is really well commented. It has the comments with the names of each MP page layouts and modules so you can easily find what you're looking for. So as I said, uh, here we use, here we have guardian person module loaded and we can simply open the search box and search for it. Guardian person and there we go. So all this CSS under this comment 
it uh, relates to this guardian person module let me now show you let me now give you an example how we can use this CSS code to customize the module for example here we have uh, arrows you can see another comment uh, so you can know what this CSS code is for and here we have uh, arrows border and color and background color on hover so let's for example customize that let's for example change the border color to uh, white and also background color to white and color can be black and also uh, border color uh, this is the default state uh, let's have it the same so we can just copy this we can also get rid of this line because we haven't changed it so what we want to do is to select uh, the lines of the code that we have changed we are going to select and copy these two blocks then I'm going to go to the page and I'm going to click edit page I'm now using the backend editor you can do this in the visual builder too click the page settings and I'm going to paste the CSS inside the custom CSS box and I'm going to click the save and update so this is supposed to change these arrows here I don't know how it is going to look like I have added some white and black colors and as you can see uh, it did change perhaps it looked better before but at least I have showed you how you can customize colors so that's basically how you use master CSS file very important don't edit any plugin core files uh, use the master CSS file to make the changes but then just copy that CSS and paste it on your page and that's it what if you simply don't know where to change something you have looked at the module settings and you can't find anything in design tab and advanced tab perhaps you have overlooked it or you simply don't see it you have checked also the master CSS file and you think it, it's not there and you simply don't know how and where to change something very great tool uh, you can use is your browsers developer tools to open these tools press F12 on your keyboard and this is going to open something like this I use Mozilla Firefox but it's really similar in Chrome and any other major browsers tool we are going to use is the first one this little arrow icon here it's called inspect element tool and when you click that you can hover the elements on your page and select them for example if I click this image here immediately on the right in this right small panel here I'm given the CSS that relates to this image that I have just clicked so I can see that it has some display block property and width set to 100% but even better it tells me that this CSS is located in impipersons.css on line 556 so I know that uh, this CSS is written in this file here and if I would like to change this I can simply copy this go to page settings paste it there and update the CSS once again very important don't edit plugin core files so I don't want to update impipersons.css file otherwise all my customizations will be lost with each plugin update let's click something else let's click this text for example and now I see something else instead the file name I can see the text inline I can see some CSS as well but it doesn't tell me in what file it is located and the reason for this is that this CSS isn't written in any external CSS file instead all this CSS I see here is in the module settings so if I would like to change the font family font size color letter spacing on line height I can simply go to this text module settings and change it from there so that's it uh, you can simply click on an element and it, it is going to tell you whether uh, there is some external CSS that you can use to customize it or if you can find it somewhere in the settings so that uh, should save you some time and help you more easily customize the page 
sometimes it may happen that you have made some updates to the page but you can't see anything changed. The reason for that may be the caching enabled on your website. If you use any caching plugins, please deactivate temporarily. Also go to Divi Team Options. Scroll down and disable these two options, minify and combine JavaScript files and minify and combine CSS files. Also go to Builder, Advanced and disable static CSS file generation and save the changes. This is going to deactivate theme caching. Now go to your page and refresh it and you should be able to see the changes. That's it for this tutorial, thanks for watching.